Mer fucking Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to Diving in the Deep. While Quinn and, uh, what's his name? Merrick are having an important talk under the water. The sun above begins to fade, and the warmth of the water is soon vanishing with it. I shiver as the shadows grow. It's getting, like, late. I better get home. Thanks, Merrick, for showing me all this. Um. She's gonna hit on him. Maybe I could, like, see you again tomorrow? I'd really like that. I could show you more of what was hidden before. Oh, maybe it'll be your hidden lady parts. I'll take you to see anything you'd like, if especially my fish penis. His gaze was a little more intense than it had been before. In that doesn't look intense. Oh, it's dreamy! And I tried to stop the smile from spreading too widely on my face. See you tomorrow then, sweet fish butts. He nods as I swim away. I can't help but glance back one last time to see him still watching me. Wait, wait she's, she didn't get to go get, a, get, go get her gear. Isn't Walton, if he's like spying on her, going to see her talking to herself underwater without breathing gear? How am I going to sleep tonight with such excitement about tomorrow? I'm going to be touching my lady type hearts thinking about Merrick the fish man. Over the next week, each day I go back to Merrick and he shows me something new. Hopefully it's not a fork you can comb your damn hair with. On the first day, he takes me back to the cavern. This is, like, quite amazing balls. How did all this gold get down here? Where? Where's the gold? As we dive beneath the waters of the cavern, he shows me the gold coins that decorate the basin-like bottom. There are hundreds of them glinting on the rocks like coins in a wishing well. I was told there was a shipwreck here many years ago. Most of the treasure here from it uh, washed ashore. But some of it found its way here. I like to touch it, like Scrooge McDuck. And you, have, you haven't collected these coins for, like, yourself? Why, uh, we have no need for gold or treasure. We mostly exchange fish poop. Humans can learn a lot from mer people, it seems. Uh, you want to see something amazing? It better not be you humming a song. More than this? He nods, a playful glint in his bright eyes. All right. Uh, we have to go to a tunnel beneath the cavern. It's pretty dark. You won't be able to see. You better not fish violate me there, bro. Take my hand and I'll guide you. All right, I'll take his damn hand. I reach out, slipping my fingers into his. Oh, we're holding hands. And he clasps them tightly. I would love to imagine if she gets to the point where she gets to have sex with him like she wants, if he just flops around like a fish out of water. <laughs> It'll be worth it, honey. Merrick was right. The tunnel beneath the cavern is so dark I can't even see my own hands. Thankfully, he seems to know exactly where he's going. His hand grips mine and the sense of safety washes over me at his touch. Bonk! As you hit your head on the wall. We spend a few minutes in total darkness before I can see something ahead. Oh my! As the tunnel opens up into dark waters, I stare down to look at the rocky surface of the walls around us. Nestled into the cracks are long veins of bright purple crystals. Uh, pretty incredible, isn't it? I get high in here a lot. The glow of the crystals highlight everything around them in a gentle violet hue, and I ride my finger along the length of the veins. I like to smoke sea anemones. They're, uh, they're not my friends. They're my anemones. <sighs> it's like the crystals are alive. Uh, I tell you there's a lot to see. I turn to look at him, a smile plastered on my face. We end up exploring the tunnel. I'll explore your tunnel for the rest of the day. Crystals are a mystery I can't resist. I can't resist you, Crystals. The next day, he guided me back to the ruins where the statue was still standing as I left it on that fateful day. Oh, I'm a statue. Kiss my kiss lips. Don't put things in it. I don't want a saga set. Which... Having a guide, even one who didn't know that much about his people's history, was still better than looking at the confusing carvings alone. Wait, what? Would that be like having a Parisian take you through Paris who doesn't know anything about Paris? You'd be like, is that the Arc de Triomphe? And you'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> is that the Eiffel Tower? And you'd be like, I don't, man, it's a pyramid, kinda. We're not at the Louvre. I, I, I hope you've been enjoying the tour. Uh, let's ask about the damn statue. Fuck the ruins. Uh, do you know anything about that, like, statue? Uh, no, not much. I touch it sometimes. When I was younger and lonely, I'd kind of, like, rub up against it. You know, whatever. Murgai's got needs. She's, like, supposedly the woman who created the shell. I mean, like, the artifact. 
He'd been trying to refer to it as I have, and it did seem rather too precious an object to just call it a shell. But you don't know who she was? Uh, no, no, no idea. She fell in love with a human, but is it Ariel? Something happened. The humans didn't like them together, I think. Oh, I see. That's why she created the artifact, partly to keep us safe, but also so she could join her love. She turned herself into like a human? Uh, that's how the story goes. No, Merrick, you idiot! You idiot! Don't tell her that! She's gonna make you try and change yourself for her! She's gonna make you change into a, a human man. Get rid of your rad bracelet. Get rid of your cool haircut. Soon you're gonna be driving a minivan. Have to hide your dumb tattoo. Stingray. I bet he's in a gang. A stingray gang. I'm not sure if it's true or not, though. It's nice to realize that the more people have tales and legends just the same as we do. In fact, the more time I spend with Merrick, the more he seems just like anyone else. Yeah, he seems like everyone I know. He seems like my friend Brad I like to hang out with. Let's play some board games. Oh, you have a fish fry tail. You breathe water. And you live around your poop, because you know when he poops, there's no toilets. He lives in the toilet. Well... With a tail, of course. On the third day, we swam a little further out than usual until we came to a rock formation, just a few rocks jutting up taller than the others. Those motherfucking rocks think they're better than the rest of the rocks, I bet you. But it's what swims around them that has me speechless. Oh, she's creaming over him. Oh, never mind, it's seals. I've never seen sea lions so close. The animals dart between swaths of bright green kelp, uh, the sun glinting from their sleek fur as they dive. Ah, uh, they used to be my kind. Oh, they're used to my kind. Oh, I thought you were like, you're part sea lion, too? Ah, uh, we fish together and swim together often. I swim close to the sea lions, and they race around me, seeming curious at my presence. After a while, they ignore me completely, dancing around me and playing together. I never thought, ugh! One of the sea lions bounces off me, sending me crashing forwards. Thankfully, Merrick is there to steady me, holding my arms in a strong grip before I end up flailing about in the water. I wonder if he does this regularly. If they're like his wingman, they're like, Don't worry, Merrick. We'll pretend to bump into her and then you're going to get some sweet lady tang. Pooty tang. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It, it never hurts to have a little excitement. I might have pooed a little bit, but it's all right. It's then we both realize he's still holding me in his mud arms. Barely any gap between us. Close your gap, you whore. Ah... Uh... A blush rises to his cheeks. His grip is gentle, but I can feel he's reluctant to let go. Um, let's stay in his hold. I'm not keen to move away either. Oh, you're a dreamy merman. So I simply smile at him and let my hands rest on his arms for a moment. I hope he makes a move. The strong muscles tense for a moment at my return touch, but ease only after a second. Neither of us move. His gaze lingers on mine, his attention making my throat tighten. What? Why is your throat tightening? Is that a normal sign when you like a person? You can't breathe? I like you! Ugh. That's you hitting your head as you fall down. Pass out. For the longest moment, for the longest time, I had no idea what might happen next, and I don't care, just happy to stay in the present. Until a large school of fish zoom out of the depths besides us. Uh, they zip around the rocks, moving close, and they dance around us, their scales shimmering like coins from the cavern. Wow! I pull away from Merrick to follow them as they dart away, watching the elegant speed with which they move. But even as I swim away, I can feel Merrick's gaze upon my booty and try not to smile too obviously as his continued attentions, or at his continued attentions. Oh, he likes my booty. Day four, Merrick took me completely somewhere new, and I could barely believe my eyes when we got there. What, he drew cave porn? Is that what it is? Are these carvings by your ancestors? All right, I hope they're by his ancestors. Because if he drew them to impress her, and that's his drawing skill, then she just accidentally, like, really slammed hard on him. Yeah, 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 my ancestors. Yeah, not me. Yeah, I never really paid much attention to them before, but I thought it might be something you'd like. You were right. The carvings were simplistic, but intriguing. Uh, it's not hard to compare them to the cave drawings of ancient humans. Uh, how incredible that our cultures seem to have evolved uh, in much the same way. I reached out, running my fingers over the carvings. These are supposed to be like humans? I point to one of the figures that has legs instead of a fin. The figure is holding the spear. 
Uh, this is supposed to represent our people's first contact with humans. As you can see, it didn't go so well. Minnie died. The humans didn't want our friendship, only our tails. <laughs> oh, that's sad. That's really gross. I imagine a beach full of half-dead humans is like lopped up your tails. Did they eat? What? Why did they want your tails? Did they eat them? Ew. I'm sorry, Merrick. That's really weird and creepy. Why? It's not like it's your fault. Is it? You didn't eat my grandpa, did you? He laughs, breaking the heavy atmosphere that had fallen. <laughs> I'm starting to realize that our uh, all humans aren't the same anyway. With a wink and a smile. Uh, with a wink, his smile grows into a charming grin. Well, at least he didn't drown us right away. He could have drowned us and been like, You're like all humans! But you know what, Merrick? I'm really, like, glad that you revealed yourself to me. Especially that you don't wear a shirt, honey. I'm having such an amazing time with you. I, I didn't think you'd be like, well, 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 like you when I first saw you. Like me? Uh, you're pretty incredible, you know? Oh, really? Oh. I mean, you know, you didn't spear me or cut off my fin for one thing. He clears his throat. <laughs> his face is bright red that stands out against the clue cool blue waters around him. Uh, maybe we should um, get going, you know? When day five came, oh! My excitement at what we'd seen was next was dampered a little when Merrick let me out of the middle of nowhere. Or led me out to the middle of nowhere. Um, um what's wrong? Dude, he's, she's getting bored. She's like, I already seen all the fish shit. Merrick, your first mistake was asking her what's wrong. She's never gonna stop telling you. Well, open water is rather underwhelming after everything else we've seen. See, she's bitching already. I laugh lightly. <laughs> and he smiles. Uh, you really think I would bring you somewhere boring? I shrug, suspicious of the playful glint in his bright eyes. Close your eyes and listen. First thing you should do is shut the fuck up. What? No, I mean listen. What? Come on, just do it. After a hesitant moment, I give a sigh and do as he asks. I tread water, keeping my eyes closed and listening for whatever it is I'm supposed to be hearing. I wonder if he's going to kiss her. And then after a while longer, I hear it. Or if he's farting. <laughs> my eyes snap open. That sound, is it whales? No, it's the fat mer ladies. Ah! No, yes, the whales, of course. The sounds are beautiful, resembling whale calls, but unlike any I've ever heard before. Uh, you can hear more now with the magic in your blood. It's incredible. And it truly is, as though listening to an orchestra beneath the waves. It's like... <laughs> Merrick swims before me with a wild smile. Or wide smile. Care to dance? Fuck yeah. I move towards him, my hand slipping into his. <laughs> with his arm curls around my waist. <laughs> it's all I can do to keep myself breathing. I'm gonna stop the LP a second to tell a story. Once long a time ago I used to live with a woman and she used to have these CDs, you know, like rain CDs, relaxing CDs at night when you go to bed. And like there was this whale one and I was like, hmm I never heard that one. I will put it in and go to bed. So I put in the whale CD and I press play and I turn off the lights. Well I tell you what, a bunch of whale sounds in the dark at night sound kind of like ghost howls. <laughs> this it's creepy. And after a little bit, it's like, that's not helping me sleep. I'm going back to the rainforest sounds. <laughs> Thanks, ghost whaling army. Uh, now let's see if I can get this right. Humans dance a lot differently than we do. With a flick of his tail, we are spinning through the current, bubbles framing us at his movements. How do you fucking know how humans dance, bro? Do you have a mer TV down here? Wouldn't that electrocute y'all? He never lets go as he keeps spinning us, his arm nestled around me, my free hand on his shoulder. The sounds of the whales keep our rhythm, but it's not long before we slow my focus on nothing but him. Uh, am I doing it right? I bet he's going to ask that later on for something else, too. Uh oh. His voice is huskier than usual. I'm very manly, oh. Sending a shiver coursing through me. Definitely. As the water around us seems to heat to the point where it might boil, I blink away from our locked gaze. At least I don't have to worry about stepping on your toes. 
He lets out a long laugh. And spins around faster again. Maybe he's sensitive about that. That we dance for a while longer till my cheeks hurt from smiling so much. The next day, I like it if she had to get a home pregnancy kit. No, oh no, it's got two little flippers on it. I'm more pregnant. The next day, I have to spend at home in my bedroom office catching up on paperwork. If I wanted to keep the mer people secret, then I had to ensure my employers didn't go searching around those ruins. As I frantically type on the keyboard trying to get the reports finished, my mind keeps wandering to... Merrick, of course. It's not going to be the things you've learned. My mind keeps wandering to the time I've spent with Merrick. Ooh, she's like creaming over him right now. Focusing on work has only made harder or wetter on my, as my mind drifted to his dazzling smile and the way he'd held me during our dance together and the feel of the skin beneath my hand. Doesn't it feel wet and cold and clammy under the water? The thought of his touch made my cheeks heat, my butt cheeks, and when I looked back at my work, I'd found I'd typed a bunch of incoherent nonsense. She Was she writing like... Quinn Merman. Quinn Mermaid. <laughs> Girls. Whoops, maybe I better pay more attention. Taking a break, I flick through my unopened mail, surprised when I see an envelope with only my name written on it. What? I rip it open, yanking out a small note inside. My excrement. Oh, excitement. Not excrement. She didn't poop herself. Quickly disappears when I notice the name sign at the bottom. Walton. Miss Lanton, I am extending my stay in town indefinitely. Should you change your mind about my offer, my warehouse is located on the docks, so if you do drop by, you know, if you want to, if you get the chance, I always enjoy seeing you. Sincerely, Walton Huntley. Cuntley. The arrogance of that man practically drips from the ink. He's like, why? Why did I sign my letter in arrogance? I should have got a real pen. I shake my head, crumpling up the note and throwing it into the trash can by my desk. After a day of paperwork, I was more than a little keen to get back into the water, and today Merrick takes me to see some more carvings. Oh, great. How many of these damn carvings do I have to see, Merrick? I bet you're carving them yourself for attention. Oops. Uh, I thought you'd like to see more carvings. Oh, that's cute of the mer parrot and the little mermaid kid. At least happier ones than last time. Are they of your people? And it's supposed to depict everyday life of the mer people from our past. Though I'm looking at them now, eh, life doesn't seem to have changed much for us. Too bad you idiots never invent anything. You make that sound like it's a bad thing. Well, maybe they don't have TV. No, it's just um, some change would be nice sometimes. The carvings show different scenes from the mer people's everyday lives. Fishing, playing with family, even swimming with the dolphins. I think I'm going to leave this question until next time. So next time, either do I ask him about his family or his people? Hmm, I'll have to think about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll leave you with this dreamy picture of Merrick. Oh, his nose. <laughs>